and the meeting will now come to order. Found it. There he is. <laughs> May we have a roll call, Madam Secretary? Mr. Reinhardt? Here. Ms. Roby? Here. Mr. Harrison? Here. Mr. Gonzalez? Frozen. Ms. Hines? Here. Ms. Hendricks? Here. <coughs> okay. Captain Lee? Here. Captain Lee here. Good morning. She's here. Yeah. Here, yeah, the new person. She's not. I'll introduce her next time when she comes up. Um, all right, we don't need to approve the minutes because we did that yesterday, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, does anyone have any uh, ex parte communications? Okay. Are there any announcements? Ma'am, starting on page number three, in review four, will be appearing via Zoom. Excuse me, I, page did, I did not hear you. I'm sorry. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Better. <laughs> what page? Page number three. three. Lean review four. Lean review four is appearing via Zoom. Um, page number four, lean review five and six, um, are also appearing via Zoom. Page number five, lean review seven, is also supposed to be appearing via Zoom. Oh, great. Okay. That can I, I just want to stop you for one mm -hmm. second. Are those people all signed up and ready to go? Are they on, on yet? What's this? Are any of them on yet? Okay. Okay, because they're in the beginning, so they need to step up if they're not on Zoom yet. They can wait a few minutes. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. At the bottom of page number five, case number two, CEB 11-21-354, 1609 Florida Street is in compliance, 112-22. Case number case two. Case number two on page five. Page number six. Case number five, CEB 10 21 317, 740 Derbyshire Road, is in compliance. Oh. 1 6 22. Huh. Page number nine. Case number 18. CEB. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Okay. Page, case number 18 down at the bottom, yeah. CEB 11-21-336, 1118 Bel Air Drive is in compliance, 121521. Um, page number 10, case number 22 is going to be appearing via Zoom, 441 Maple Street. Okay. And that's it. All right, thank you very much. Question, uh, what was number one again, please? I'm sorry? Number one, what was okay. number one? Two. Lean review four via Zoom. Oh, yeah. Is that what you're talking about? No, first? no, I'm talking about lean review number one. Nothing. No. Nothing. Oh, okay, thank you. Okay. Okay. Would our code officers please come stand up and be sworn in? Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? Thank you. Okay. We will be calling cases by number and for the most part in order as they are listed on the agenda. If there are any attorneys that must be in court, We'll hear those cases first. If there are any police officers that need to get back to duty, we'll also hear those first. When your case is called, please come forward, state your name and address, and be sworn in. If you're not the owner of the property, you're going to need to tell us what your relationship is to the owner of the property. Speak into the mic. Uh, 
because our everything's recorded. We're got, we hear from our code officers first, and then we give you a chance to respond. Please direct all your responses to the board. It's not time to have a conversation with your code officer. You can do that outside of the meeting. Um, so uh, ju just try to remember to, if you have a question for him, you, you will always, or her, you'll always be able to get in touch with them or talk to them outside. And witnesses, if you have brought a witness, they can testify and they'll have to be sworn in too. Let's see, if it goes really long, we'll have a break at 11. Um, Could you refresh my memory about, did we vote on the minutes last night? We time? did yesterday. Did, we voted yes, on the minutes I, yesterday. I thought, thank yeah. you. Okay. I know this isn't your favorite place to be or your favorite thing to do but we just need to try and keep it not rude. I will treat you with respect, and we all needed to be treated with respect, and so do the code officers. And you'll get your chance to say what you need to say. We can't tell you what to do. We can't give you advice. As a board, we're not allowed to do that. We're just here to listen to both sides of the story, and then we vote on, uh, today it will probably be voting on imposing fines or not imposing fines or giving more time or whatever. Then we vote on that. But we can't tell you how to come into compliance. That's something you need to speak to your code officer about. Yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, we're gonna, first thing we're going to do is take something out of order. Um, case number 23. This is the only thing we're taking out of order. And this is Mr. Thomas. Hey, boy. How y'all doing? Good morning. Good morning. This is case number CEB 022144. Mr. Thomas, if you could step over to that other podium where the microphone is. Oh, right. Perfect. Yeah. Thank right you. There. Okay. Ms. Kirk, good morning. Good morning. Sarah Kirk. Good morning. Inspector good morning. with the city. Hey. Go ahead now. <laughs> oh, I'm glad we can go on. All right. <laughs> go ahead, Ms. Kirk. Mr. Thomas, huh? your name for the record. What you say? State your name for the record. Keith Thomas. Raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to provide to the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? Oh, Lord. Thank you. All righty. Go ahead, girl. I mean, Miss Weech. Okay, uh, Mr. Thomas is returning because he is on the city's housing uh, rehab list, roofing assistance list. Ooh. Uh, he has, the city has begun the first process, uh, the intake stage. So he is, the next step would be uh, receiving quotes for a new roof. Mm -hmm. uh, so at this time, we would like to amend for, till the April hearing. Okay. I make that motion. Second. All right, we have a motion to amend to the next hearing from Mr. Harrington and a second from Mr. Gonzalez. I'm sorry, just to clarify, we asked for April, and I think that was the motion they made, and you said next. I was just wanted to clarify the motion. To amend the previous order of non-compliance and allow respondent until, what is the April date? April 6th. April 6th, April 6th. April 6th. April 6th 2022, to come into compliance. So y'all going to have it done by the end? Not up to me. Sure. You'll just have to come back in April. And yes, ma'am. Yes, okay. ma'am. All right. The program, the program ain't letting y'all know what's going on. I know. I know. Well, Ms. just tell, just keep in touch with you. Know, you know I will, Miss Weegee. I will. Okay. Thank you. All in favor? Okay. We All have, in favor. We have a motion and a second. Aye. Everybody in favor say aye. 
Uh, Aye. Aye. Kind of pose. Aye. Motion carried. You know I do, Miss Weedy. See y'all later. Good luck. Thank you, ma'am. All y'all board members. Okay, now we're going to go back down to our first lean review. Lean review number one, 113 Mason Park Drive. This is CEB 0517-60. Respondents present? Junk and trash. This is an old one, huh? Yeah. Good morning. Whoever is going, if you all want to speak, you all have to be sworn in. Okay, so state your name and address for the record. Miguel Atariwana. He is the owner of the property. Okay. Miguel Atiwana. All right. Okay. What's your uh, name? My name is Christina Helgamo, and I hold the mortgage on his house. Okay. Ronald Helgamo, also hold the mortgage. Raise your right hands. Right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? I do. I do. Now, he doesn't speak really good English. Since they're on this together, are you able to interpret for him? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. Speaking English at all? Do you have the Do you have the oh. wording for the? No. Yeah. Madam Chair, I have a question before we get into this. When they say they hold the mortgage, what what? Who is the owner? If they're saying he's the owner, but they hold the mortgage. Through a bank. Okay. Thank you. Well, the city's satisfied with uh, them interpreting and representing for him, as long as the board is. Okay. All right, let's begin. We're going to start. Let Mr. Uh, Butler. Madam, Madam Chair, we typically do what the uh, lien reviews is. Um, since it's their motion, yes. all their requests, I uh, would hear from them for the uh, applicant all right, well, on what they're asking. Okay. All right, so well, who's going to speak first? Well, I, I can go ahead and. Um, uh, go ahead and speak right into the mic. Uh, the owner, uh, Miguel, uh, uh, lives in the house. He's the owner. We hold the mortgage on the property, so we're here to help him out. Uh, he was never notified of this lien. He claims that the signature on the notice is not his, and uh, he, he was, we, we never received anything, so. Um, Who, he never received anything. Is correct. what he's claiming. Correct. Correct. Um, so uh, nobody knew that there was anything going on, and uh, the violation, I guess, was a piece of plywood that was leaning up against the fence uh, that he had there to make some repairs, and uh, was never, uh, but he wasn't notified of any violations. So. Okay. The only reason I, we... well, I understand what you're okay. saying. Okay. At the time uh, that we're not sure, but at the time that this happened, there was a storm. So it's possible that he had that uh, plywood there to make some repairs. And at the time he was in the hospital also having an operation on his back. So it could be that that's why that board was, was there for a while, because he wasn't able to to um, to do the repair. What, what, what is the, you have two different addresses, uh, 175 Ekana Circle and 113 Mason Park Drive. What's the? Property in question is the Mason Park. The Ekana is our address. Okay. 
I also have a question. Go ahead. Uh, so, you never received notice, but somebody signed for it, and he says it's a false signature. Is that what I'm hearing? Um, Wait, we'll get there. Yes, that's correct. Right. So how did he find out that there was a false signature of this notification? Well, there was a lien placed on the property, and we were selling another piece of property, and they tried to collect on the lien on this property from our property that we were selling. So that's how we found out. And how long ago did you find out? Because this case goes back to 2017. We found out in December of last year. But what have they been doing with the letters? <laughs> letters? The one that was signed for by, a, it looks like a Laura, Laura Ritchie. Ritchie. Ritchie, who's Ritchie? That's who signed that. Yeah. I don't know. Quien es el señor Aurora Ritchie? Quien es? Maybe a healthcare provider or? Only he lives at that house. Only he lives. So who in the world is Richie? We have no idea who Richie is. I'm passing that around. No, nothing. Because that's who signed the green card. Yo vivo solo. Yeah, él, he lives by himself, and he does not know that person. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
This case was opened back in February 14, 2017 as a field generated case. The violation was for outdoor storage. Uh, the first notice uh, was February 14, 2017. On March 15, 2017, the violation was to be in compliance. The last date of my reinspection was November 24, 2021. Result of my reinspection was in compliance. Uh, staff request a lien reduction to the sum of uh, $1,000, uh, which is administrative fees. The okay. um, reason for the reduction is because the outdoor storage uh, was the only violation and was very minimum. So that's where we are. Thank you. Okay. So with that, I will make a motion that we accept the city's recommendation. Okay, I'm days, or how do you want to, do you want to do that? How long do you want to give him a chance to pay it? Thirty days. Uh, yeah, to be paid in thirty days. Okay. I'd second that. So we have a motion from Mr. Gonzalez, and who seconded? Second. Okay. Mr. Reinhardt to reduce the amount of the lien to $1,000, subject to being paid within 30 days, or the fine will revert to the original amount. All in favor say aye. Aye. Like sign opposed. Motion carries. We appreciate your cooperation with Thank us. You. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, lien review number two, CEB05-21-116. Johnny Brett Jones. Mr. Jones here? Yes. Okay. <coughs> Good morning. Good morning. State your name for the record, please. My name is Brett, Johnny Brett Jones. Raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to provide the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. Uh, okay, I did a lean review. What would you like to tell us? Well, uh, or share with us. This started, uh, you know, back in uh, 2020. Uh, I had originally filed, uh, or, you know, filed for a permit in, uh, I believe, uh, In, uh, on September 24th of 2020. Uh, I'm not sure what happened to that when it got admin closed at some point, but COVID was going on and all those kinds of things and people were out of the office. Um, my code enforcement officer had went into the hospital and it also changed several times uh, in, that, in that period too. The first person I believe had retired and uh, one had to be hospitalized and I couldn't get in touch. And then uh, on the the last two times that I was going to come before the board before the fine was imposed, uh, the first time I um, had an accident <clears throat> uh, coming back from Miami, and the second time I had an accident coming back from West Palm Beach uh, the day before it and couldn't get back in time to make either one of those board meetings. Of course, you didn't have one in December, uh, so uh, I'm, I'm here today, but uh, I, would, uh, I would like to get this lean reduced or, or removed, you know, based on the extenuating circumstances that I had to either get him before the board to present a case to you guys or not. And I, oh, I had also filed, originally I was going for, a, how would you say it, a, a waiver or not a waiver, but a, you had I, I was trying to get a, what, an exception <laughs> to, uh, and then I, I, I tried, I was told I had to have a, a, a survey for that. And so a uh, survey was 16 weeks out. I did get them to do it in less time than that, but it was still quite a way. So I decided to go ahead and then just go with a straight up building permit. Okay. And change, okay. change past so that. And, and I have the permit, or I got the permit and everything, but, and now I'm in compliance, but I just wanted to, it, it was a, a, a series of unfortunate events that <laughs> kept me from getting in compliance much sooner. Okay. Any questions from the board? This is a permit for a storage shed after the fact that has been issued or was issued and finaled. I can Mr. hear from Boston. the officer. All right, let's uh, talk to Mr. Bostwick. Good morning. Good morning, Inspector Bostwick. Credentials on file. Um, this case was opened back in July of 2020. Um, first notification was on August 19th. 
This case was opened up by a previous inspector who left. I came on in January um, around, I think it was around March. I got in contact with Brett, and that's when he started to, you know, follow back up on the original permit that was closed. And he did work on it. He had to get a survey, try to get a variance, so it did take time, you know. So at this point, staff requests we can cut the lien by 50%. Questions from the board? Uh, by 50%, are we talking about $7,500? Yes, sir. Well, I'll make a motion. Uh, all things being fair, I would uh, reduce, uh, I would recommend to reduce the the fine to a thousand dollars, as we did in our previous case, keeping all things equal. Um, well, the the city's position here is that that all things are not equal, and that's right. that's why there's a different request from the city. Right. The well, impact yeah. of the violations on this case are different. Um, there is a, a significant amount of things going on in this property and issues going on here. Uh, this was an issue also related to being out of compliance with for failing to get a permit for well over a year before they even ever got a fine, or almost a year before they got a, a fine even in place. Mm -hmm. And then um, being having a fine run for was it from June 10th until October 4th before they finally even got the, uh, the, 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 the corrections made, so. I, I still move forward with All my right. motion. Uh, okay. So we have a motion on the floor from Mr. Gonzalez to reduce the amount of the lien to $1,000. Is there a second to that motion? Hearing none, we'll take another, uh, the, uh, I'll accept another motion if someone else would like to make one. I make a motion to agree with the city's recommendation within the 30-day time frame, the 7,500. So, okay, reduce it 50% yes, to 7,500 payable in 30 days. We have a motion from Mr. Reinhardt. Is there a second? Okay, that motion fails let's try, for lack of a second. Let's try let's, $2,500 let's, $2, this time. All right, Mr. Harrington's made a motion. I'll second it. For, to reduce the amount of the lien to $2,500 payable in 30 days, and Mr. Gonzalez has seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Like sign opposed. Motion carries. We've reduced your lien to twenty five hundred dollars. Yes, ma'am. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank okay. you very much. And it's payable within thirty days, or it reverts back. You understand that? Okay. And case number three. CEB zero four dash O five dash one six six. Session services. <clears throat> Good morning. Good morning. Please state your name and address for the record. My name is Johnny Van Session, address 1108 Lakewood Park Drive, Daytona Beach. Okay. Raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to provide the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. What would you like to tell us, Mr. Session? Well, I noticed here that the first notification was dated 2-14-05. Never received it. But I did get information later on, which was about June 2005. At that point in time, I went to the city, requested a permit to dem dem demolish the property. Uh, they gave it back to me on about two June the 10th. I had it demolished, and apparently nobody went by and checked it. But here we are back in 2021. I'm trying to sell the property and find out I had a lien on it. I never knew anything about it. So that's basically it. Did you call anybody when you, after the demolish was done to come out and? I talked to the inspector prior, but apparently I was in between trips and he said he would check it out. 
when I thought it was done. Any questions for the respondent? Mr. Jones, I'll have a question after that. Okay, well, let, let Mr. Jones. Mark Jones, Supervisor, Neighborhood Services, you know, credentials taking, were on file. Okay, let me, let, let me just say that Mr. Jones, Mr. Stenson's not here today. That's why Mr. Jones is here. Oh, I'm not aware of this. Thank you. Okay, go ahead. Um, again, this case was back from 2005. The fine was imposed in June of 2005. Uh, and we were just noticed back in November 30th of 2021 that it was in compliance and we went out and inspected it. Uh, the building, everything has been demolished. It is, the property is in compliance. Uh, we were recommending a reduction of 10 per, to 10 percent or fifteen hundred dollars. Okay. Any questions? Yeah. You, uh, the recommendation is to lower it ten percent of the fifteen uh, fifteen thousand or lower the fine down to fifteen one thousand five hundred, okay. which is the reduction Thank you. Thank you down the to ten percent of the the, yeah. the amount okay. that's on. Therefore, record. I would make that motion to accept the city's recommendation. All right. Oh. The uh, Mr. Gonzalez has made a motion to reduce the fine to fifteen hundred dollars payable in thirty days. Is there a second to that? Second. Second from Mr. Reinhardt. All in favor say aye. 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 Like sign opposed. Motion carries. So no. It's reduced. I'm not paying it. That's that, a, that was done in June 2005. Okay, thank you. Thank you. We've decided uh, what you do is up to you from this point on. I can't understand it because it was done in 2005. It, we, we've decided this case. Is that it? Okay, thanks. Okay. <clears throat> case number four via Zoom. We have the Zoom person. Up there. Okay, good. Can't He's here. Do. Good. All right. This is lien review four. CEB 06 21 177. Good morning. Good morning. What is your name? My name is Karen Torres. How My are you? My father is. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. How are you related to Mariana Rosa? I am his daughter. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So state your name and address for the record and be sworn in. My name is Karen Rosa Torres. I live at 73 Thunderbird Road, Central Valley, New York, 10917. I'm calling in re well, regards to my father's property that we now sold at 1342 Killian, Daytona Beach, Florida, 32114. Okay. All right. Uh, you want, yeah. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Thank you. Okay. Go ahead, please. You can good, tell good us morning, what you'd everyone. like to. Good morning. Um, I'm calling as my father's property in regards to his liens. My father um, is now full dementia, wheelchair bound and bed bound with a catheter. Um, we were actually notified in July. My father was found in South Carolina after going into septic shock, crashing into a wall, found three days later in the woods, finding he had a stroke and a heart attack in July, July 3rd. We were called from the police department, who my father had my husband's um, NYPD uh, badge with his number. That's how we found him. Beforehand, we knew that um, we had two wellness checks done on him during COVID knowing that he was not answering his phone and stuff like that to find him disorientated. And we were trying to get down there um, back in May. Uh, my sister went down there trying to take care of a couple of things. Um, up until this point, since July, we brought him back to my home where he's residing, bedridden with nurses 24 seven. Um, we, as soon as we got down there to look at his property, uh, we complied. We found the letters 
from John Stenson, which we complied with everything, taking care of everything, and the property has now been sold. And um, we're looking to get the fees and all the charges of the waivement of all fees removed. Okay, we understand. Into Sorry consideration for all your with trouble. this. Yeah, sad. Okay. We'll hear from, uh, are there any questions? Not yet. Uh, right. One, one uh, question. Mr. Mr. Stenson's not here today, so Mr. Jones is going to. I did have a question. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. When did you find out about the notification? Uh, when we went back when, in August, after we were situated here, bringing him back from South Carolina to my home in New York, my sister went down in August, the beginning of August, after we got him situated here at my home to find the letters because he wasn't getting his mail, his phones were disconnected. That's how we were doing the wellness checks. With the COVID, we couldn't get down there. Right. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Mr. Jones. Yes, um, the staff is requesting to uh, waive the fine. Thank you. Okay. To zero. Okay. To zero. Uh, to zero, yes. Okay. I move through. All right, Ms. Himes has made a motion to waive the lien in its entirety. Is there second. a second? Second. Second, Mr. Gonzalez, all in favor say aye. Aye. Like sign opposed, motion carries. There you go. All done. Thank you. You're welcome, good luck to you. Sorry. Thank you. Okay. Lean review number five is also on Zoom. Do we have? Yes. Oh, good morning. Good morning. Thank you. All right. Are you Mr. Miner? No, uh, I'm Christopher Ulrich. I'm an attorney for Mr. Miner's estate. Mr. Miner is deceased. Mr. Miner is deceased. My, uh, yes, I'm sorry. I, I can hear you, Madam Foreperson, but some of the members I can't hear. Okay. So, all right. I'll, so I'll we all need to. What's the status of the estate? The, the, Mr. Miner died. Well, on... let's let him be. Oh, he doesn't need to be sworn no. in. Correct. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Mr. Miner died on February 18th of 2021. That was the day uh, bef uh, after the first notification was issued with respect to this property. The personal representative, who then was the owner, the properties in his estate, uh, didn't find out about the problem until uh, mid, until early June, when a family member going through Mr. Miner's things uh, found out, um, sent it on to us. Um, what you're looking at is the pre-cutting of, of the property the way it was at the time when we learned about it, mm -hmm. which you look at February pictures, we learned about it in June. In any event, um, what, what, I, what I, I, I went through a timeline in my, in my application for a review and in an effort you know, to sort of show you that this is not a situation where the owner, at this point the estate, sat on its hands, didn't do anything, but we really tried to get this problem resolved. And time and time again, either because we dealt with vendors who wouldn't do the work or vendors who did an incomplete job, or vendors who didn't show up or just had trouble scheduling us, time and time again, we were pushed back and lost time, resulting in an increase in fine. And uh, so, so we recognized that the property was, was not in compliance. We recognized that it took a while to get it into compliance. Um, but we do believe that, we, that the, the delay in doing it and then the large fine that it resulted was not the result of inattention, lack of effort, or, you know, we think we just not, not the result of the owner, the estate's fault. I mean, I could go through the, the timeline. I don't think I need to do that. You have the papers in right. front of you. Correct. But, but I will say that at the end of the saga, we had dealt with, either interviewed, hired, or, you know, otherwise dealt with approximately 15 vendors to try and get this work done. We paid six separate vendors to cut, prune, or remove trash that had been thrown by neighbors on the property. We hired three who wound up not doing the work that they were hired for at all, and each failure cost us additional time. And even we, we lost a month when we hired Atlantic Treat Service, which is a very good company. They finally fixed the problem, but it took them a month from the time we hired them to the time they did the work. And, uh, and, you know, they, and I understand it. They have a busy schedule. 
They wanted to talk to Officer Bostic to be sure about what they needed to do to clear the problem. They did that. That took a little bit of time. And so all of this time is we had no control over this loss. So we believe that at the end of the day, rather than having a $15,000 fine, we should have a $7,500 fine. And we would, we would ask the commission to recognize that and reduce the fine accordingly. Okay. All right. Uh, questions for the attorney representing Mr. Minor. All right. We will hear from... <clears throat> I have one question. Now, who, who is this? This is Mr. Bostick. What? Go ahead. Did he say that the uh, Atlantic Tree Service did the work, or they did not? He said they did. Atlantic Tree Service month. did the work. Is that they correct? They did the work. But they, it took they, they were the last company that was hired. Well, yeah. that's not quite true. They did the bulk of the job. They, right. they did the final cleanup, and they did oh. the pruning to raise it to an eight-foot level. Okay. Okay. The only thing they didn't complete was they did not remove the trash, and that took another two, three weeks to find a company that actually would do that. Okay. I have Mr. a question Boston. too. I have a quick well, question. Go ahead. Uh, so it's a two part question. One, how many people are involved in the estate and are they all in agreement? How many people are involved in the estate? The estate is being handled by a personal representative. There's a Connecticut estate. Mr. Okay. Mr. Minor was a Connecticut resident. Mm -hmm. There's a Connecticut domiciliary estate and there's a Florida ancillary estate to handle the assets that Mr. Minor had in Florida. And, and everybody's in agreement. The estate. Mm -hmm. Thank it's, you. What's the size of the estate? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. What? The size of the estate. I heard him ask that, but never was answered. But spe speaking our, as attorney, the attorney. our attorney asked what was the size of the estate. Did you ask what was the size of the estate? No, I did. The status. Status. Okay. Uh, the status. Okay. Okay. All right. Status. Well, what is the, the estate, status? The, the estate is rather new. Um, it was opened, I think, the, the personal, the ancillary personal representative in Florida was actually appointed by the court while this was going on. Um, so it, 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 the state is not very far along. Okay. Are they prepared to pay this fine if when, once we make a ruling? Uh, not. Yes. Okay. Good. Mm -hmm. Kind of immaterial. Uh, all right, Mr. Bostwick. Um, staff will accept the offer of $7,500. Okay. I'll make a motion that we accept the city's recommendation uh, to lower the fine to $7,500 to be paid in 30 days. All right, second. second. Oh. All right, we have a motion from Mr. Gonzalez, a second from Ms. Times to reduce the amount of the lien to $7,500 payable in 30 days. Have to go to the court to get the approval to pay the fine. They need more than 30 days. How much time do you need? He's asking, uh, Mr. Uh, Ulrich, he's asking if How much the time estate is prepared to pay the fine within 35 days. Yes. I yes. Okay. Yes. Asked and answered. I thought I asked that. You did. Credit was in you material. did. Mm -hmm. You did. Okay. All right. Okay. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Like sign opposed. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Case number six, or lien review number six via Zoom. Do we have that person? Yes, Thank you. Right okay. This is CEB 05 21 139, 1222 Midway Boulevard. Good morning. Good morning. You can hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yep. We're, we're all good. All right. State okay. your name and address for the record and be sworn in, please. This is Susan Cox, 1222 Midway Boulevard, Daytona Beach, Florida. Okay. Raise my right hand. Raise my hand. Do you, do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Thank you. And I'm also in the background. I'm friend Michael Cox, and I'm uh, helping my mom represent herself, and I swear to tell the truth as well. Okay, so Michael is also here. All right. I need to Fine. swear him in separate? Yes. 
Go ahead. Get, Do you uh, swear or affirm the testimony you're about to provide to the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. What would you like to tell us, Ms. Cox or uh, Michael Cox? Uh, my mom is requesting a reduction in her lien. Uh, we'd be happy if we could be able to pay $2,000 for what's currently on there. We could pay that immediately. Okay. And for the rationale, um, my mother has been helping my uh, sister who recently passed in October of cancer. She's been up here the last year helping out with the grandkids. So there was just miscommunication on her part with some of the lien agreements getting stuff done. But when the second hearing happened in June, and when the fine started getting imposed, she started work early July. It technically got finished by the end of July. It was just she had miscommunication with the permits, and she wasn't able to resolve out to about late October. So we're hoping just with administration fees and what was going on that we could just pay a reduction in the fee of two thousand dollars. Okay. Questions for uh, Mr. Yeah. Cox. Quick question. Uh, just for clarification. This case goes back to September 11th, 2014? No, I believe no. this case goes back to February of 2021. Oh, okay. So this is Lean a... Review 6. Oh, okay. All right, thank you. Any other cool. questions for Mr. Cox? No. No. Six or seven? Yeah, oh, the yeah. case was uh, May 20, brought before Okay, us, yeah, I got the wrong one. Yeah. All right. Uh, Mr. Jones, Mr. Jones is here uh, <clears throat> to represent the city because the code department, because Mr. Stenson is out today. Okay, yeah. go ahead. Yeah, Mark Jones, Supervisor, uh, Neighborhood Services. Uh, staff is uh, acceptable to reducing the fine to $2,000. Okay. So moved. Second. All right, we have a motion to reduce the amount of the lien to $2,000 payable within 30 days made by Mr. Gonzalez. And the second is Mrs. Times. All in favor say aye. Aye. Like sign opposed. Motion carries. Thank you. We've reduced it to $2,000. Thank you very much. Thank okay. you so much. Is Have a nice day. Online or is it just going to be in person for the payment? Let me get to the secretary. We'll answer that question for you. Go ahead. Thank you very much. I'll send you an email and an invoice. So you'll Thank you, Ms. Reno. You're welcome. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We have one final lien review. It is lien review seven. Is that person ready? That's a Zoom call as well. Uh, no, I don't have that person. I have case one and two for Zoom if you want to get that one out of the way. No, let's, I want to do seven. For, I want to get the lien reviews finished, and then we may go to case 22 just because they're on Zoom and waiting. But, okay. Uh, so this person then is not showing up, Veronica T. Birch, for, so we have nobody to listen to and no defense, and I didn't even see a hardship letter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there a hardship letter? No, I don't see one either. No, I, didn't. I don't see one in the packet. I didn't yet. have one. I don't. Sarah, you have any discussions with this woman? Yeah. We, uh. um, I've had one discussion with, I believe, the son. Okay. Uh, that was it. And what did they? What was the discussion about? Uh, that the property's in compliance, and they would like a reduction in the lien. In our position, it's no reduction? Right. Our position, because of the, the case was since 2014, it just came into compliance in 2021 that the staff's recommending no reduction in the lien. Okay. Is that the Is same one that alive? the mother and father died? That I do not know. No. This was a case with a former inspector in 2014, so the only details I know is what it looks like now, looking at the old pictures and speaking with the son briefly. So I make I a motion to go to the city's, the city's right, recommendation. Let, let me, let's answer. Uh, Ms. Himes had a question. Go ahead. I was wondering, was this the same case that the mother died and the father died? No. Not sure. It's been a long time, but. I, I don't. 2014, so. Yeah, yeah it was I, I a long time ago. I, I, don't, yeah. I don't see that. Yeah, it's not. 
It's not here. It's very. No, I don't. I don't see that in any of the paperwork. All right. So, uh, Mr. Gonzalez made a motion to reduce the amount of lien to. No, I didn't. Oh, I'm, no, I'm sorry. I'm, not I'm, reduced, but. Neither of you. If they're not. I was accepting the city's recommendation. Well, you know, except. Okay, we'll talk about that later. Um, okay. So what you're doing is denying a reduction of the lien. That's your motion, to deny the reduction of the lien. My motion is to accept the city's I recommendation. Well, what is which the city's recommendation? city's recommendation is no reduction in the lien. Right. Right. There is no defense. I don't right. see what yeah. choice. I, I think that we're all, right. all in the Let's same make the motion clear, please. I'm going to make the motion that I, I, the motion is to deny a reduction of the lien. Must right. be paid. So affirmative vote would be to deny. Yeah. Uh, so affirmative vote would be to deny. That motion has been made by Mr. Gonzalez. A second? Second. Mm -hmm. Second by Mr. Reinhardt. All in favor say aye. Aye. Like sign opposed. Motion carries. Okay, thank okay, you. That is the end of our uh, lien reviews. Uh, I mean, I just want to explain that saying accepting the city's recommendation is okay, except that. I mean, not in this case, in all cases, uh, except that we need to state the motion ourselves. It comes from the board. Um, we can either agree with the city or not agree with the city, mm -hmm. but just to say we accept their recommendation does not make, make it clear enough for the record mm -hmm. uh, that that's what we want to do, and I think we need to state the motions clearly from the board, not just accept, you know what I mean? It has right, to right, be right. Well, this is a tape easy to comprehend. Right. You know? So noted. Okay, thank you. <laughs> All right. Didn't now we we'll have another our... van, another lien or something? Excuse me? I thought we had another lien. No, we don't. That was the end of our, we had seven. We did them all. Do we want to take the other Zoom? Yeah. What what case is that? 22. 20 what? 22. 22. <clears throat> All right, let's skip right to 22 as we have them on Zoom and we can uh Case number 22 is on page 10 down at the bottom. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Could you state your name and address for the record and also be sworn in? 441 Maple, Maple Street. Street on the George L. Starks. I'm sorry, what was your name again? 441. My name is Cynthia Smith Starks. Raise your right hand. Sir, from the testimony, you're about to provide the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. Your mic. All right, Cynthia Whoops. Starks, right? She is. Yes. No. Sorry. Yeah. What you swear, if, he, he's you swear from the testimony, you're about to provide the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Okay. All right, Ms. Starks, what is your relation to George? I'm his wife. Okay, uh, now, since we're back to our uh, old cases, we're, we will hear from Ms. Kirk first, and then we'll give you a chance to respond, okay? Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. Since the last hearing, I have had contact with Mrs. Starks. 
Uh, there has been a renovation permit issued. Work is underway. Uh, there has been progress. I re-inspected yesterday. Staff is requesting uh, to amend the case to the next cutoff to allow time uh, for the project to be completed. All right, what would you like to tell us, Ms. Starks? Oh, that we would have done a lot more. I'm bedridden in the hospital. That. And my husband, he uh, was hospitalized twice. He's why? Um, I say my hus husband was hospitalized twice. He had his, what's that, gallbladder taken out where it, where it had become necrotic and gangrenous. And right after that, he ended up going back in because he had uh, somehow got the COVID. Okay. Any comments from the board? So you're recommending the next cutoff? Yes, sir. Uh, can all be done by then? Um, I spoke with Mrs. Starks, and, and she seems to think that uh, next month that they should be completed. They have uh, started the work on it. Uh, these are before pictures. Yeah. And then uh, that's a current picture right there. Okay. Are permits, have permits been issued? Yes. In, okay, mm -hmm. everything's, okay, so. I make a motion to amend to the next cutoff. Okay. City's recommendation. Second. All right, we have a motion from Mr. Reinhardt and a second from Mr. Harrington to amend the previous order of non-compliance and allow respondent until March 2nd, 2022 to come into compliance and be returned to the board for consideration of a fine of up to $1,000 per day until compliance is achieved. Mm -hmm. All in favor say aye. 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 Like sign opposed. Mm -hmm. Motion carries. Okay, um, you know, just keep in touch with Miss Kirk and let her know what's going on. Okay, okay, so we've given you till next month to get, you know, get whatever done you need to do. But you, you let her know what's going on. Okay? Yes, ma'am. All right, yes, thank you very right much. Here. Thank you. Thank you. Uh -huh. All right, now, okay, now we're going to go in order. <laughs> <laughs> Case five, case one. We're going to start with case one. M M Madam Chair, I'm sorry. There's there's some confusion about the last order. I don't know What's if the, the respondent's still on Zoom. Um, you said March 2nd. You just said, it's not the next, next cutoff. Month. It's cutoff date after that. Oh, so it would be April? You give it to March or you give it to February. No. February. Oh, sorry. Uh, that's, February. It's okay. okay. Eliminated a month. We don't. It is fine. Let's That's it fine. It We're just going to leave it as March. Keep it, so. keep it, keep it, keep it. I, I, that was my fault. Huh? It's okay. The hope is that she's in compliance That's anyway. So. Right. Oh, she so is there. We're going to March meeting. We're just going to move it to the March meeting. Okay. And yeah, we'll just leave it as the meeting. as the way the order was called, or the, it was worded. Yeah. I, 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 I heard that, but I thought it was the wrong date. Could you restate it? The response is still there. Oh, you're still there. Okay. We're going to... We've what we voted on was to give you till March second, and it should have been February second. But we're going to leave it as is. Okay. And hopefully you'll have everything done by that. You won't have to come back at all. Okay. So we've given you actually two months because it was our mistake. But my, it was my mistake. Two months uh, and. You just tell Ms. Kirk when you need her to come by and see that the work is all done, and hopefully you won't have to come back. Okay? All right. Good. Thank you. Okay. I, she could hear me, but we could not. Okay. All right. So it's March. <laughs> Case number one, CEB 10-21-290. <clears throat> is that a Zoom, too? Oh, it was a Zoom last time. Uh, that's well, that's from my notes. It was a Zoom last time. Okay, so CB 10-21-290, Hester and Lawrence Grace Trust. And Riley Grace was here last time. Correct. And we gave them two months last time. Okay. 
All right, um, good morning, morning again, Inspector Bostwick, with City of Daytona Beach credentials on file. Since the last hearing, I spoke to Mr. Grace last week. No progress was made. Staff requests a fine of $100 a day, capped to 10000 Okay. We already, they already had a, an extra month to mm -hmm. get moving on this, and there's been no progress. So we don't have any uh, permits or anything like that? No, ma'am. Okay. I'll make the motion that we take $100 per day, capping at 10000 per cities. Okay, till it reaches a maximum of 10000 right. All right, mm -hmm. motion from Ms. Roby. Second. 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 Uh, Thank you. From Mr. Reinhardt, all in favor say aye. Aye. Like sign opposed. Motion carries. <clears throat> all right, case number two is in compliance. Case number three CEB 11 21 359, Anthony Jackson. Mr. Jackson. Not. Not <laughs> We're going to laugh about this again. <laughs> okay. Good morning. Once I guess again. Mr. Jet, no, nobody's <laughs> here. Okay. No, no, no. Uh, Inspector Butler, credentials on file with the City of Daytona Beach. As it pertains to 1241 Cadillac Drive, since the last court proceedings, I've had contact with the property owner. And there has been um, no progress. Staff requests $100 a day to a maximum of $10,000. How much per day? $100. Uh, you said you had contact. What did they say? Well, this case has opened oh. back in June 17 of 2021. Uh-huh. And at, like you see it, as yeah. you see it, uh, they keep saying they're going to get it done, but okay. the pictures okay. don't lie. They do not. All right. Uh, well, Chair Owen Chain motion to impose a fine of $100 per day against the respondent effective today and continue until compliance is achieved or reaches a maximum of $10,000. K, $10, Motion, Ms. Roby, second. Second. Mr. Reinhardt, all in favor say aye. 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 Like sign opposed. Motion carries. Thank you. All right. Case number four. This would be Mr. Fitzgerald, who is not here today, so Mr. Jones <coughs> is going to be doing this case. Okay. And it's CEB 1021-315, Daryl Jones. No, no one showed up. Okay. Uh, we, we have had contact uh, from the owner, uh, but very little progress has been made. Um, what he's done is he did go ahead and cut it, then left the remains and didn't finish cutting the sides, uh, the clearing the fence lines and the, the rest of the property. Uh, we're asking for a fine of $250 a day with a cap of 15000 Does anyone live in that house? That's the back of the That is house. the back of the house behind this property. Oh, so it, it's just the lot. It's the vacant lot. Yes. yes. And you've had contact with this gentleman? I have not had contact per uh, Mr. Fitzgerald's notes that he had contact and ex informed them what it was that needed to, uh, to complete this and nothing, no further progress. So the, the one picture, that yeah, picture. That, that that's inside. from back in. Yeah, that, this picture is from back in June. Oh, okay. Uh, when we originally posted the property, he did go in and uh, the center. clean it, but didn't complete the cleaning, and we're just not having any movement since then. Is, is he responsible to remove the debris, or is the city yes. responsible on their yard waste ditch? No, on um, vacant lots, uh, it is the uh, owner's responsibility because they're not paying to have trash removal because they don't have a water right. service. And we are informing vacant lot owners of that because there has been a lot of confusion yeah. about that. Yeah, that's uh, so when we're issuing the violations and, and uh, when we're communicating with them, we're making sure that they're aware of that, especially good. when we see them leaving it at the roadside. Uh, that's a good idea. Thank yeah. you. Excellent. I mean, that's good to know. And commercial <coughs> property is the same as that. Yeah. They're responsible mm -hmm. to get their own yard waste out too, correct? Right. If it's a vacant lot, the, the, the bottom line is if you're not paying uh, utilities, um, then there is no trash there's there. no trash service at that lot. So you have to find a way to dispose of any trash or debris that is gathered at that lot. Okay. Yeah. 
motion. And the bot the, the, in addition to just the removal of the trash here, this the com work was not completed here. They mowed part of it, but not completely cleared the rest of the lot along the tree, the, the fence line, and okay. and other issues along the property here. Okay, Ms. Himes, did you want to make a motion, motion that we accept the city's recommendation of two hundred dollars per day with the cash? I think it was two. Wasn't it two fifty? Two fifty per day. Fifty per day up per day. to. Fifteen thousand. Uh, $15,000. Uh, so we're second. All right. We have a motion from Mrs. Himes to impose a fine of two hundred and fifty dollars per day up to fifteen thousand dollars and continue until compliance is achieved. Well, OK, that's the motion. And another second is Mr. Jones local. Or is he one of these? People that don't hang I don't know that either one of us can answer that. Okay. Uh, we are not the inspector on the case, and he's just not here today. We have a motion and a second from Mr. Gonzalez. All in favor say aye. Aye. Like sign opposed. Motion carries. Case number five is in compliance. Case number six, CEB 11 21 333. Ted Rousseau. And this, again, was Mr. Fitzgerald's case, but he's not here, so Mr. Jones will take this. And this is from first notified in 2020, July 2020. Okay. Uh, Mr. Jones, how can you Yeah, since the last hearing, we've had no contact from the property owner. There has been no progress. Uh, again, this is a vacant lot. We're asking for a fine of 250 a day with a cap of 15000 Chair, I'll entertain a motion to impose a fine of $250 per day against the respondent effective today and continue until compliance is achieved or reaches a maximum of $15,000. Such a motion? So moved. Motion, Mr. Reinhardt. Is there a second? Second. Second, Ms. Himes. All in favor say aye. 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 Like sign opposed. Motion carries. Case number seven, CEB 11-21. Dash three five six. This is Jeffrey and J. Lewis Gates. Mr. Fitzgerald not here. Mr. Jones is very Yes, we have had contact um, with the property owner. He has done some maintenance of by mowing the grass, but that was all the um, progress that has been made. We're asking for a fine of a hundred dollars a day with a cap of ten thousand. No pictures on this one. And I apologize if the pictures were not okay. added. Okay. Hundred dollars a day, you said? Yes. Okay. And he enough. was first notified a year ago, so correct. Yeah. Let's get a little testimony says no pictures. What is the actual violation? <clears throat> Yeah, so just tell us. This is the second there hearing. There are no pictures. Tell us. Well, this is the second time this property has been before the board. Um, there are the pictures of the property as it was on 914, and that is how the status of the property is at the moment. Um, it's unmaintained. Uh, as you can see, the shrubbery is uh, very overgrown. This is right on um, North Hollywood. Uh, the wall on the front is coming down. The, the building is decrepit. You can see, go back to the last picture, Joe. You can see the garage over there, part of the door is halfway open, uh, and it's not secured. None of those things have happened except mowing the front yard. Does someone live there? Uh, not to my knowledge. This is the case in which you guys asked if it was a, a, a violation to have your garage door open. Yep. I don't know if you recall from last right. meeting. In yep. That helps for anybody's recollection. All right, so no one lives there. The vacant. To the best of my knowledge. So yeah. Yes. Uh, well, yeah. And no, you know, no progress or just a, a little progress. Okay. Chair will entertain a motion to, any questions? Chair will entertain a motion to impose a fine of $100 per day against the respondent. Well, all right, let me ask you a question before I say that. Why is it not 15K? Uh, the property uh, is homesteaded, is my understanding. Oh, it is homesteaded? Okay. Uh, I would have to uh, check that. Again, I'm going off the uh, notes of uh, Inspector Fitzgerald. Okay. 
All right. All right. So, Chair Orange, a motion to impose a fine of $100 per day against the respondent effective today until and continue until <laughs> compliance is achieved or reaches the maximum of $10,000. Such a motion? So moved. Mr. Reinhardt, motion. Second. Second. Mr. Gonzalez, all in favor say aye. Aye. Like sign opposed. Motion carries. All right. Now, we have case number eight, CEB 11-21-234, Willie Mae Lloyd. And here comes Mr. Are you Mr. Simmons? Sure. Okay. Mr. Sh yeah. Simmons, 545 3rd Avenue, William E. Lord is the deceased aunt. Mm -hmm. Raise your right hand. You swear or affirm the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. Do we have another case on this property? I, I, for some reason, I have in my notes that there were two separate cases, but maybe not. All right. I think okay. we have another case with Mr. Simmons. Yes, yeah. Oh, another case with you. Okay, right. that's what it was. What was that? Was yours the lane review? Oh, you no. 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 No, it was no. Yesterday. 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 We had so Okay, that's what confused me. Okay, <laughs> all right. Uh, so we'll hear from Mr. Garcia, please. Good morning. Uh, good morning, Inspector Garcia. Credentials on file with the City of Daytona Beach. Uh, since the last hearing, I've had contact with um, the owner, and uh, he has made su significant uh, progress. And with that, we're asking to amend to the next cutoff. Good news. That's what we like to see, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, Chair, I'll entertain a motion. Any questions? Chair, I'll entertain a motion to amend the previous order of noncompliance and allow respondent until February 2nd to come into compliance and be returned to a subsequent meeting for consideration of a fine of up to $1,000 per day until compliance is achieved. Question first. Who is the actual owner? Get rid of it. If you can check it again. She's deceased. Uh, She's deceased. Okay. Uh, so, our okay. so we couldn't good have had talk okay. Okay. with the owner. Uh, yeah. Who is the actual owner? Of the property? Well, it's uh, family members, two two daughters and a son from William A. Lloyd. But they live in Houston, Texas. So has this property been legally transferred? It's in the process. So what, what does that do for us? It doesn't, doesn't change the matter. Nothing. No, nothing. Does it go to the property? Make a difference. Uh, representative. Uh, yeah, reaction. but you're allowed to represent. Oh, yeah. Right. Yes. yeah. Okay. So we just want to get that on the record. And they're about 95% done anyway. All right. Anyway. Okay, good. Yeah, I went by there this morning. Good. And this, they just got Great. a couple little stuff. Terrific. All right. So we'll go back to the motion to amend previous order and allow respondents till 2-2. Uh, 22 to come into compliance. This is today's. And it was Mr. Reinhardt. Was there a second? Yes. Second, Ms. Himes. All in favor say aye. Aye. Like, sign, opposed. Motion carries. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Just what we're looking for is compliance. We don't want to, we really don't take any joy in finding anybody. What we're looking to do is just get compliance. That is the object of code enforcement so that the city gets. Uh, to looking better. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Case number nine, CEB 11-21-328, Herbert Green. And this is Danny's case too, go ahead. Uh, since the last hearing, I've had not have contact with the owner and no progress has been made. Trash and debris still is being left on the property. Um, the staff's requesting a fine of $250 a day, capped at $15,000. But this is actually the picture now. Yeah. Not this what, one. What's this that? Is, one. is that a boarded up window? 
Now, it, this is actually the picture. Now, the picture you've seen before was the property next to it that was demolished. Oh, okay. And there was transients <laughs> on the property. and so since Th that This is what happens when people don't take care of their properties, that transients move in, and this is why we have code enforcement, and one, it, it's like it, it just spreads in the neighborhood and ruins the neighborhood. Okay, uh, what your recommendation? All right, uh, Chair, I take motion to impose a fine of two hundred and fifty dollars per day against the respondent, effective today, and continue until compliance is achieved or reaches a maximum of fifteen thousand dollars. Such a motion. So motion, Mr. Reinhardt, second. Second. Second, Ms. Roby. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Like sign of polls. Motion carries. Thank you. Case number ten, Danny. CEB 11-21-329, Randy <coughs> Rocco at Al. Since the last hearing, I have had no contact from the owner and there has been no progress. Staff requesting a fine of $250 a day kept at 15,000. What per day, Dan? 250 a day. 250. To 15? To 15,000. And this is it's never been done. It's we're getting numerous complaints, yeah. and it's an ongoing yeah. issue. Okay. Chair on chain, motion to impose a fine of $250 per day against the respondent effective today and continue until compliance is achieved or reaches the maximum of $15,000. So moved. <laughs> motion, Mr. Reinhardt. Second, Mr. Gonzalez. All in favor say aye. 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 Like sign opposed. Motion carried. Case number 11, CEB 11-21-351, Edith Fernando Estate. Go ahead, Danny. Um, I was given a, uh, for Ms. Ms. Huger, she gave me something to uh, get to you today. Okay. Uh, she wanted to be here today, but she couldn't. Who is Ms. Huger? Uh, she's one of the complainants, uh, neighbor from the, in, the, in the property, in the area. Okay. All right. I'm going to, I'll just read this out loud because it's kind of short. Camping out and negative activity have been playing, taking place. And the property needs to be cleaned up to help our neighborhood be safer and healthier. Unacceptable to live in this horrible conditions. She has a lot of photographs. Uh, she regrets not being able to be present this morning, but requesting that we read this. Um, she's practicing social di distancing. Um, so that's why she's not here and she has a child that has to be transported. Yeah, that was from. handed to me during the hearing. Yeah. Uh, okay. Since the last hearing, I have had no contact with the owner and there has been no progress. Um, I had had no progress until I just recently <clears throat> seen some work that had been done. I don't know if it was done by the city. Who was it done? I have had no contact. But nevertheless, they're still in non-compliance. There's a lot more need to be done. All they did was took a portion of it and cleaned it up. But they left it there, right? Yep. Uh, yeah, they left uh, still. And there's still more um, on the west and east side that needs to be uh, cut. And also on the uh, north side of the property needs to be cut. And there's still um, transient issues there. Mm. OK, now let me ask you, uh, Captain Lee, let me ask you a question. Would the city go in and clean that lot up if it's causing all these problems and send them the bill? Yeah, that does happen sometimes. I'm not aware of an issue where I was involved where we did this at this property, but it could be something where the city manager got involved or some other department got involved. Mm -hmm. If there was a health safety problem going on, uh, an encampment um, leads to sometimes in, they lead to unsanitary conditions right. um, related to human waste, um, needles, things like that. And it leads us to a point where as a city, we have to just go in and, and remove right. all that debris and uh, up, up, uproot that entrenchment or that encampment and get it out of there. Um, and then we usually, on the back end, as code enforcement, we're um, uh, addressing that through this process here as well. Okay. Usually we know about that. Um, so I would suspect that this is probably the, somebody connected to the property owner, but it, it could easily have been the city too, and we just were left out of the loop on this one. I can say there was numerous, numerous calls on the complaints on this and the traffic that was going through. You can even see the path. Yeah. 
and even Absolutely. dumping. There was vehicles dumping in there. Uh, so what's your recommendation for a fine? Uh, $250 a day kept at 15000 I think this is egregious. I really do. I do too. Yeah. And uh, I think that I would be willing to go higher. I was going to ask a question if we could. Okay. Before we I, do, I was going to ask a question before you. Yep. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Uh, according to what uh, Captain Lee explained, I have a question. Is it within our purview to ask the city to uh, clean it up and charge the yeah. owners? Well, and, and, the answer to and, the question is yes, you can ask. Can't force the city to do it, but you can no, ask. Yeah, you no, can no. Ask. Well, that's all I'm saying is, can we ask? Okay. Yes, you can ask. We okay. can ask. The uh, the other thing is, I mean, is it a health and safety? I mean, it verges health on a health and safety issue to me. Uh, if I, I, uh, um, because of having no contact and still getting complaints, I had a magistrate case, case uh, the other day, and I went to 500. Mm -hmm. if, if I could go to 500 a day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that 15, That's what I was going to say is that typically based on the inspector's testimony with the circumstances that he's, he's expressed, we would usually uh, double our request to $500 a day, max of $15,000. Um, I, can, I can tell you that I will swing by and I will look at it and see if it needs to be something that we need to address further. Okay. Based on that last picture that we saw, it looks like that um, the health safety issue might have been abated enough to where... We might not have to address it now as far okay. as immediate concern, okay. but yeah. Mm, thank you. Plus we have to worry about the city's workforce and... Right, yeah, we don't want to take on the additional work that should be done by property well, owners because we don't have the staff absolutely. to do it. Yeah. Because it won't take very long for this to reach $15,000 at this rate. No. Can, I have one more question. This is an estate. Is this a registered estate and there's mm -hmm. contacts and there's everything else? that's needed. Uh, I'm not aware. Um, I don't okay. have that answer. Okay. Let me, I, I guess. Can we I'll raise ask. the 15,000? Presume this is written up based no. on what's on a property appraisal's no. record or did you have some <coughs> other information? It'll just get the quicker. It's quick just what's on the property appraiser. Like okay. So that no, means no. it's an established estate mm -hmm. and we're not arguing over who's, you know, who needs to oh, yeah. care of what. Uh, yeah, the information that you see listed here is as it is on the property appraiser okay. site. Cool. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, Mr. Reinhardt has made a motion to impose a fine of five hundred dollars per day, yes. effective today, against the respondent, and continue till compliance is achieved or reaches the maximum of fifteen k. Is there a second? A second. Second, Ms. Roby. All in favor, say aye. Aye. I, like, vote, I voted in favor of this when the when they reach fifteen thousand. Is that the time that, that we should take other action, or that's the? Action? Typically, what happens, especially in vacant lot cases, is that uh, when they reach their maximum fine, um, that is around the time in which the city evaluates uh, the process of foreclosing on the property, and and that's how we proceed forward. Um, we communicate with the legal department. They do an assessment of it, and um, that that process proceeds forward based on the evaluation of whether it's um, in the best interest of the city to proceed forward. My only problem, do when we raise it to this, and then we put a lien, then mm -hmm. they come back, and then they appeal the lien, mm -hmm. and it's and nothing. I think yeah. less money would be spent if we could notify someone. Then it, that's. Okay. Well, I, I would think that the neighbors that are complaining, if they had contact with these mm -hmm. people, they would be reaching out to them also. Well, the actual um, complainant is, is even trying to purchase the property so that she doesn't have this issue. And that I did um, not only um, sent it certified, but I also posted it on the property and I posted it in City Hall and mm -hmm. sent it regular mail. Yeah, it's important to remember that uh, this is not a respondent that's communicated with us in any way that I know of. Yeah. Um, if it had been somebody that's in communication with us, then those considerations that Ms. Iams had okay. would probably be important. But and if they're not communicating with us, it's hard to work with them. Okay. All right, we have a motion and a second. We already voted. You made the motion? I, no, I don't think no, we did. No, no, no. No. All in I favor voted. say aye. Aye. Like sign $500. Opposed. Who made the motion? Uh, Mr. Reinhardt made the motion, and 
Did you second? Ms. Heim seconded it. I was Roby. Oh, Ms. Roby Ms. seconded Roby. it. And uh, Mr. Gonzalez voted against it. Okay. Okay. Done with that. Now, case number 12. Thank you, Danny. Uh, Thank you. So this is going to be Mr. Jones again, because Mr. Stenson's not here. CEB 10-21-298, Delbert Gale. Since last hearing, we've had no contact, and there has been no change to the property. Um, city is asking for a fine of $200 a day with a cap of 10000 is this person I have in my notes, is the health of the owner an issue? Do you have anything in the notes? I have no knowledge that? of that. Yes, that's him. I, I, Madam I, Chair, that's, you, you're correct. Okay. Was that the man that was elderly mm -hmm. and very ill? That's what I thought, okay. And as far as we know, he's still living in there. He's still alive. I mean, he was very, very ill. And it that didn't seem to me that he had anyone to help him do anything. Yeah, because Mr. Fitzgerald was supposed him? to give him some information on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If, you, if those questions are relevant, which I think they are okay then I think we should because mr. Fitzgerald isn't here maybe we could just for clarification it's not mr. Fitzgerald it's it's inspector Stenson Stenson uh, mr. Stenson mm -hmm. same, maybe, same that thing. Be, maybe that would be the, the nice thing to do, do maybe what a wellness check maybe, maybe. Yeah, just wellness wait check. And push it on to the next, the next hearing one. yeah next um yeah, I'd like. I would also agree with Mr. Harrington that maybe we need to check in and see what's going on with this so person. A well, would you like man. to continue it? Yeah. Next so, yeah. cut off, and then maybe he'll be. Next cut off. Or we could just do the next cut off or whatever. That's what I said. Oh. Next cut off. All right, that'd be probably easier. I don't, how do you want to do the motion? Next cut. Well, off? yeah, yeah we should do that. Next. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Mr. Harrington, making the motion Make for the next motion, cutoff, order of noncompliance, and allow until February 2nd to come into mm -hmm. compliance or be returned to a subsequent meeting for consideration of fine of up to $1,000 per day. Second? Second. Mm -hmm. Second, Ms. Roby. All in favor say aye. 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 Like, sign, oppose. Motion carries. Can we get a wellness check done? We can ask. Definitely. I got it. I got it on Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, uh, uh, another question. Regardless, the property is not in compliance. That, so that is absolutely correct. How are we correct. going to get to that point is the question next time. Right, mm -hmm. right. Um, well, if we have but I remember this being... Uh, I mean, we've got to find a way. Right, uh, I know. But yeah. let's just see what's going on with them, and we'll go from there. Uh, she gets well, I think, I, I think right. it's important to remember this. I think it's notice being here. It's in, it's important to remember that the city can't be the enforcement arm and the savior. So um, it was just an exception. I will do my best to do a wellness check and 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 community and contact any community resources that I have. Uh, but I can tell you that there's significant violations on this case that I know my community resources will not be able to accomplish. Okay, so I guess we just put it off <laughs> the inevitable. Um, but I think Mr. Harrington is right. Uh, I would like to add that, you know, sometimes we pick and choose who we favor and do things for and consideration while we treat other people in the same similar type situation. Well, this gentleman, I, well, I, that's what, yeah, he this was, was an ex, to me, this was an exceptional. I case. understand. And, and the understand exception also that. being that we had questions for the inspector who's not here right. as well. I, so I understand it fully. Okay. I'm just saying. Yeah, I know. We, we, it, we, try to and be fair. we do try and be fair, and every case is different. 
-hmm. There are no two cases right. that are the same with the same True. circumstances, the same respondents, the same anything. It shouldn't matter who the respondent is, but. Similar, my word yeah, was similar. Similar, right. Uh, and I agree that we should look for, uh, what's the word? Consistency. Consistency, thank you. Consistency. Consistency. My age showing. Um, <clears throat> anyhow, uh, but this case was exceptional to me, and I recall it vividly, so we'll just go from there, and next month we'll be fine. And it may be we have to just find him anyway, so. Okay, let's move on to case number 13, CEB 1021300, Pat Hurd. Is Hurd here today? You need some consideration. A uh, permit has been issued for this uh, work. In fact, per our track it system, it was scheduled for a final inspection today. So I'd like to cut off. Okay. All right, Chair, I say a motion to amend previous order of noncompliance and allow respondent until 2-2 two, two. Uh, two, two, to come into compliance or be returned to a subsequent meeting for consideration of a fine of up to $1,000 per day. Ms. Himes, a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Second. Second, Mr. Gonzalez. All in favor say aye. 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 Like sign opposed. Motion carries. Case number 14. This is CEB 11-21-348. Neely and Brian <coughs> Walker. It's Walton. Oh, I'm sorry, Walton. <laughs> okay. And uh, Mr. Jones is taking over today because Mr. Stenson's not here. Yes, uh, on this case. Uh, you want to get up for yeah, excuse me. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. State your name get for the name record. Address for the record. Neely Walton, 948 Pelican Bay Drive, Daytona Beach, Florida. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to provide to the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> Go ahead. <coughs> yes, since the last hearing, uh, Mr. Stenson had received one email, but there hadn't been any progress. Uh, we were, staff was requesting a fine of $100 a day with a cap of 10000 We've been in a battle with our insurance company yes. that's lasted more than a year. Um, I brought a letter from my attorney right now, um, dated January 4th, 2022. We're currently in an active lawsuit with our insurance company. Since the last appearance before this board on November 11th, 2021, we've had two meetings. Both were required meetings when pursuing a legal case against an insurance company. On December 29th, 2021, we had a call with our insurance company and our attorney to make a recorded statement regarding our claim. On January 4th, 2022, we had a mediation meeting with our attorney, our insurance company, and a third party mediator. The results were unsatisfactory and our case has now escalated. Our attorney has filed suit against the insurance com company and we are awaiting the next step. We're asking for more time as our attorney is advising us not to proceed with repairs to the property while our legal case is active and pending resolution. Okay, now I remember the last time you were here, we asked you for that documentation and you brought it today. Yes. So we appreciate that. Yes. Thank you for doing that. You have a letter we can look at? Yes. That's wonderful. Thank you for doing that. Uh, so the roof is, the tarp is keeping the water out of the house? Well, as I mean, the tarp stays on, yeah. um, that, that's what I the winds have been really ferocious recently. Yeah. And so the tarp is shredding. Um, Look, that's, okay, go ahead. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. I mean, That's okay. I, I the tarp has shredded in certain parts. So you need it. I mean, you live there? Yes. So you want to have a safe environment. Absolutely. And you, you could fight over this money forever. Don't you want to get... Uh, attorney we, her attorney. Yeah, well, yeah, that's what the attorney had. Attorneys advice. give lots of advice. So do I. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, that's, you know, neither here. I mean, it is here or there, but uh, you're not even supposed to get the tarp fixed so it doesn't cause more damage to your property? We've been in contact with the roofing company, mm -hmm. um, and, and they've not responded with anything. 
I got a question for the lawyers. So you do it in litigation. My question for the lawyers is: While they're in litigation, does that affect our ability to do any fines or anything like that? No. No, it won't affect our ability to do what no. we do. Mm -hmm. I don't understand why they wouldn't want to mitigate the damages. Yeah, I, I agree. That's my concern here is that um, it would seem that taking care of the problem would prevent further damage. Right. And mm -hmm. in addition to that, it would give a hard number as to what the losses or, 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 or costs of repairing those damages would, which would make the argument more sound and, and easier to make for the lawyer. But that's but just my opinion. Okay, but, yeah. <clears throat> Kind of feel that way, Joe. Well, I do know from personal experience if she fixes it, she loses. Mm -hmm. We're just doing what our lawyer has recommended. What? So is that the only part of the roof that's damaged where it's tarped there? No. No. Go to uh, if close, uh, Joe. If you go in, click close on that photograph right there. On the high roof, you can just see it because mm -hmm. it's, oh, it's, 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 because it's in the back of the building. We okay. can't get to the rear. It's of the, property. the entire backside. So your your property is being damaged as we speak. Yes, when it rains. I don't understand. This is a tough one. You don't get punished for subsequent remedial measures. What? You do not punish the landowner for subsequent remedial measures. She wants to fix it. She should fix it. But her, she's requesting her insurance company to cover to do the coverage that they're paying for. Is right. what it all boils and down. And if to. you lose that case, <clears throat> yeah, then you have to pay for it plus additional damages. Right. It is a sticky. Okay. Yeah. We truly want this to be fixed quicker. Um, it's not our desire for this to continue. That's not what we want. But we are in Do you process. Have a court date? Uh, not yet, no. We just had this um, had a, the mediation. Mm -hmm. the mediation. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And they're scheduling a court date for yes. you? Yes. Do you, what, does your lawyer have any idea when that might happen? I've not heard anything else. Are you looking to do the whole backside of the house or the whole roof? Well, my husband could answer that very quickly. <laughs> um, I think we're doing the entire roof because that would, that, I don't want half a roof to Correct. be great and the other half not be the same. Okay, I'd like to make a Can motion I, um, that we fine her $25 a day till the maximum of 10 k and that way you can go after your insurance company for any fines you endured through the city of Daytona. Does that make sense? It does to me. And trying to make it so it won't, well, hopefully the, the lawyers will get going because you're being fined and they'll get you a court date sooner. Okay. And there is a lien review process. And there is a lien review process that you can come back after you're fined and, okay. and we could either lower it, waive it or. Okay. 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 So, all right, we have a motion from Ms. Roby and a second from Mr. Gonzalez to impose a fine of $25 per day against the respondent effective today and continue until compliance is achieved or reaches the maximum of $10,000. All in favor say aye. Aye. Like sign opposed. Motion carries. Thank you. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Okay, okay, thank you so much. I mean, once they find out that maybe there's a, you know, you're being fined for something that you're paying them to cover, mm -hmm. maybe they'll say, let's get her in court. And, you. and those, well, you know, it's really not up to us to get involved in the, their court right. case. Right, but at least we're here to put a fine on her. And, uh, <laughs> and as I said, if, if, you know, if she loses the court case, we have nothing. Yeah, and then she has to pay the fine. I see it there. <laughs> well, we still got the twenty-five dollars to right. pay so fine. Now we have something. So right. Yeah. The answer mm -hmm. is always read the fine print. Yeah. <laughs> <that's> right. <laughs> All right. Case number fifteen is this a Zoom? Well, before it was Zoom. Uh, this is David and Marjorie Darrow Set Living Trust.
Good morning. Good morning. Marjorie DeRoss at 8 Cormorant Circle. Okay. Marjorie, your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to provide to the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. Now we're going to hear from Mr. Jones, who is here today, instead of Mr. Stenson, who is not here today. Okay. Um, since last hearing, there has been no change. Uh, I checked, and there's been no permit application for the roof repair as of um, yesterday. Staff is asking for a fine of $100 a day with a cap of 15. This case opened, they were notified back on May 5th, 2021. All right, Ms. DeRossett, what would you yes. like to tell um, us? On June 7th, I sent Mr. Stenson an email as to the progress. Mm -hmm. um, we are still in litigation, too, with our attorney against our insurance company, which damages to our roof has not been resolved. Our intention is to still move forward to repair this roof at our expense. Uh, we have submitted, and I did send an attachment to uh, Ms. Stenson, on December 22nd to Pelican Bay Architectural Review Committee, a processing form to approve the shingles we have selected. It has been approved by Cypress Cove, the sub-association, on December 30th, and is now in the hands of our Pelican Bay Owners Association for approval on January the 18th. Since our sub-association approved it, I'm assuming, but never assume, that the uh, Pelican Bay Association will approve it, but it does have some good high qualities to it. Okay, so once approved, ARC and K Roofing has been contracted to seek permits from the city, which they tell me takes about two weeks. And once we receive city approval, they will order the materials for the roof and with supplies as they are, it would probably take 46 weeks. So our timing to get our roof repaired is by March 14th or that week of. And I can submit this to you. I don't know if Mr. Stanton did not get it. I, I am not aware. You can submit it anyway. That's a good to idea. To you, to you? Yeah. Here. Okay, Please. thank you. Yeah, I sent him the email, and I hope Mr. I Stanton a, is okay. I had a question. Yeah, go ahead. Um, the... Pelican Bay, there's multiple HOAs. Right. One has to approve, then Pelican Bay itself has to approve. Right. right. Okay. All right. That's right what I thought. Now it's if with Pelican Bay. Okay. And they should have approved that when Cypress Cove approved it, but I think there was a little time problem there in getting it all. And approved. in the interim, you've applied for the permits for. Well, no, we no, can't yeah. apply can't for apply the permits until, until, until Pelican Bay. Pelican Bay approves. Well, because right. if they don't, there's no sense in doing. Applying for the permit then. Right. Okay. Right. I gotcha. And so I'm hoping with applying for the permit, we're on the Basically, you way. have agreed or amongst yourselves. Yes. You're no, going to pay for it. We are going to pay for it ourselves. And then worry we're about the insurance suit later. Yes. I'm, okay. not, I'm not going to go through what that yeah. last customer went through. We want to secure our yeah. building, our home you. where we yeah. live. Yeah. yeah. Because so the tarp it. has come off already. Right. We put it on the second time already. Right. Okay. Yeah. I'd like to make a motion that we amend to the March meeting since she's... March set to cut off? Well, the March cut off. The, uh, the works to be completed mid-March. Yeah. It may be best if you were going to amend that far to just go to the April cutoff in hopes that they'd be in compliance before then. Okay. I'll change I'm just, just, just as a recommendation. To, yeah, April. Yeah. To Thank amend you, the April cutoff. Second. All right, we have a motion from Ms. Roby and a second from uh, Mr. Gonzalez to amend the previous order of noncompliance and allow respondent until, uh, what's the April cutoff date? 4-6. 4-6. 14? 4-6. 4-6. Mm -hmm. So April 6th to come into compliance or be returned to subsequent date for consideration fine of $1,000 per day. All in favor say aye. 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 Like sign opposed. Motion carries. Okay. okay, so we've given you till April. If it gets done before that, please contact. I will let him know <laughs> immediately yeah. so that I don't have to show up right. <laughs> in April. Yeah, exactly right. Thank you very okay. much, all of you. Thank, thank you for thank being you. very compassionate with everybody. Thank you. Thank you.
All right, case number 19, Mr. Yates, good morning. CEB 11 21 337. Jerry Janicek. Uh, okay, he's here. Good morning, everyone. Hi. How are you all doing? State your name and address for the record. Gerard Janicek, 714 North Oleander Avenue, Daytona Beach, 32118. Sorry. All right, we'll hear from Mr. Yates and then we'll. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to provide to the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Can you give me your last name again? Janicek, J-A-N-I-C-E-K. Thank you. And your relationship? Oh, that is me. Yeah, it is him. That's what <laughs> it is. That's not my house, though. Right. So that's not the one. I thought we were doing one thing. Yeah. Yeah, I, I thought this would be case... Case 19. Oh. 16. Uh, we're doing 19. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I was going 16. Yeah. Yeah, what case jumped up. Oh, yeah. Are we doing 19 or 16? You called case. I, I'm sorry, I guess I called it out of order. Okay. Uh, yeah. We did 15, 18 was in compliance, and I just saw that and skipped the page. But well, let's just do this one. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we can do this one. That's fine. <laughs> sorry. It was weird looking at somebody's house. Yeah, I was like, wait a minute. Case number 19 right now, and then we'll go back to 16 and 17. Okay. So you have sanity. Thank you. Sorry. Okay. I have so many notes everywhere. A lot okay. of scribbles. <laughs> In Inspector Kevin Yates, Neighborhood Services. My credentials are on file. Uh, since the last hearing, um, the owner has been able to get a hold of his drawings. Um, they're now in a contracted engineer's hands um, for the final stamp. Uh, so they should have the permit and be able to st get things done within the next month. So I'd like to extend compliance uh, to the February date. Any questions? What would you like? Do you want to say anything? You're no, you're I, I spoke with Kevin. I gave okay. him a call last week. It okay, just good. took time Thank to you. get an engineer. Yeah. I'm and then, to, to or it. not an engineer, a draftsman, and right. then an engineer to stamp right. it. Okay. And I showed him a letter outside that I will have it by the end of the week and I'll be in the permit office on Monday, the latest. Cool. And Wonderful. find a contractor. <laughs> I'm already, the work's That's already good. done. Oh, right. Yeah, I just, I built it without a permit. Right. So there are some things I need to do to make it in compliance. The engineer gave me drawings that I have to address. Once I do that, I'll have the city inspect it. And knock on wood, me and Kevin will no longer be best friends. All right, uh, Mr. Harrington has made a motion. Is there a second? Move to the next cutoff. Ms. Robert, uh, the next cutoff is 2-2. Two -two. Uh, to come into compliance or return to subsequent meeting for consideration of a fine of up to $1,000 per day. All in favor say aye. Aye. Like sign opposed, motion carries. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Okay. I'll be in touch with you once. Now let's go back to. <coughs> Thank 16. you. 16. 16 and well, you 17. We only have one person out there. Who, who's, who's, is there someone out? Are you waiting, sir? 24. What case is what number are you? 24. All right, come on up. We'll hear your case. Then we'll go back to 16. We have another lady. No, I, oh. no, no, she's, no, she's, she's going to join our board oh. Oh. next month. Oh. Oh. How lucky for her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, he's outside. Uh -huh. He'll get it. <laughs> wow. Okay. It won't get very far without that problem. No, but it won't realize too it. Far that <laughs> oh, my phone. All, All right. right. We are at case 24, Larry Sanders. Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay. Go ahead and be sworn in. State your name and address. Uh, uh, Larry Sanders, 721 Newman, Tony Beach, Florida. Oh, the right. There you Raise go. Okay. Okay. Thank Raise you. your right hand. Yes, ma'am. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to provide to the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, uh, Ms. Kirk, what's going on? Okay, uh, Mr. Sanders is on the city's um, rehabilitation housing assistance program. Um, I have verified that he is on the master list as well as the roofing list. Um, we are asking to amend to the April cutoff, and Mr. Sanders has spoke, has received a phone call from the Midtown Redevelopment Director regarding uh, his case. So I think uh, things are moving along. Right. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Chair will accept a motion to amend the previous order of noncompliance and allow respondent until 4 6 
to come into compliance and return to a subsequent meeting for consideration or fine of up to $1,000 per day. So to motion, Ms. Roby, second. second. Ms. Himes, all in favor say aye. 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 Like sign opposed, motion carries. Thank you for waiting. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Uh, now we'll go back to 16. Uh, and this is Mr. Yates again. I'm sorry, we got, I just took mm -hmm. everything out of order and shouldn't have. <laughs> I've got all these notes here. Uh, this is CEB 10-21-307, Lawrence Vandenberg, who's not here evidently. Um, we have a new owner on the property, so we'd like to ask uh, to extend compliance to the next cutoff to allow them to be properly noticed. Okay. Do you wanna, do you know the new owner? Do you wanna announce it as part of the record? Uh, I don't have it in front okay. of me. That's fine. Okay. All right. Chair will entertain motion to amend the previous order of noncompliance and allow respondent to come into compliance until the next cutoff date, February so 2nd, 2022, will be returned to the uh, board for consideration of fine of up to $1,000 per day. Ms. Himes made the motion. Is there a second? Second. Second, Ms. Roby, all in favor say aye. 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 Like sign opposed, motion carries. Now the reason that I read this, because <laughs> we have, to, all these things are recorded. Mm. And they're recorded in case we have to go to court or the person takes us, mm -hmm. takes the city, does not gonna take us. Could, but. Could take you. Could, could take us, but takes the city to court over something. If we have not announced to them the conditions of the fine could be up to $1,000 per day, then that will just give them more of something to jump on. Uh, so I didn't know it could be up to $1,000 a day. Mm. So that, that's why all these things need to be said. So I know they're boring and it slows things down, but they all, they all need to be read into the record. Okay. All right, now we're on case 17. Uh, CEB 11-21-335, Patricia Ann and Christopher Reen, no shows. They were here last time. Yeah. The city is requesting to withdraw the case uh, due to an error in the noticing. And it would be a request for dismissal. It's at, it's at the uh, imposition of fines, so we would need to. You want to dismissal then? Yes. We want to withdraw and dismiss or just no, dismiss? No, we don't withdraw, just dismiss. Sorry, I misspoke, just dismiss. just dismiss. We dismiss this case, but this means that if, I mean, they, they have to be recited? Right, or recited, yeah. But whatever the code department decides to do, is that right? Yes, but they already have the permit for it, and okay, it's about right, to be inspected, so. Okay. Uh, well. I move to dismiss the case. All right. Mr. Uh, Harrington has made a motion to dismiss second. this case. Ms. Himes is seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Like sign opposed. Motion carries. All right, now we did case 19. Now we're on case 20. Am I right? 20. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> okay. Case 20, CEB 11 21 340. <clears throat> Daniel Yancey, who was here the last time, not here this time. All right, since the last hearing, um, we've had no contact and we've had no progress. I'd like to ask for a fine of $100 a day to a max of 10,000. Hundred a day up to 10? Yes. All right, so they were supposed to be getting new windows or replacing the glass and they've done neither? Correct, and they also haven't pulled a permit. Uh, uh, so no permits, no anything. Okay. All right, Chair, I'll entertain a motion to impose a fine of $100 per day against the respondent, effective today, and continue until compliance is achieved or reaches a maximum of $10,000. Such a motion? So moved. Motion is time. Second. Second, Mr. Gonzalez. All in favor say aye. Aye. Like sign opposed. Motion carries. <clears throat> Case 21, CEB 11 21 341, Ronald Pavlower. All right. State. 
<laughs> no show, no contact last time. What are we doing this time? All right. Since the last hearing, um, we've had no contact, uh, no significant progress. Uh, we'd like to ask for a fine of $100 a day to a maximum of 15000 Say $100, Kevin? And yes. Let me look. Can I just see damage off it? So, does anyone live there? No, it doesn't appear so. Okay. Vacant. Still vacant. Okay. Um, all right. Chair Orange, I motion to propose a fine of $100 per day against the respondent effective today. And I really should say the date, but I get tongue tied when I start doing that and continue until compliance is achieved or reaches a maximum of $15,000. Such a motion? So much. Mo okay. <laughs> motion, uh, Mr. Reinhardt, second, Ms. Himes. All in favor say aye. Aye. Like sign opposed, motion carries. Thank you. Now, <clears throat> Ms. Kirk, we're back to you. <laughs> Case number 23, is that right? Or did we do that? We did that. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 25. Okay, now we're down to 25. And we did Mr. Thomas first, right? Okay. Case 25, Ernestine Johnson. Okay. CE, this is case number CEB 09-21-268. Key, what can you tell us, Ms. Kirk? Okay, uh, Ms. Johnson, she is also on the waiting list. She is further down on the list, so this one's going to be... Uh, a little bit of time. This is what I found out this morning. So uh, we we are just asking to amend till the April cutoff, and hopefully at that time we'll have a, a closer date for you. She cleaned up the grass and everything. Yes, yeah, she has been maintaining that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. I move to amend to the April cutoff. All right. Uh, move to amend previous or not compliance to April sixth. Uh, to come into compliance, we return to a subsequent meeting for consideration of fine of up to $1,000 a day. Mr. Harrington made the motion. Second, Ms. Roby. All in favor say aye. Aye. Like sign opposed, motion carries. <coughs> now we are on case 26. Elise Thomas uh, came last time. We had a question about permits. And probate, what's going on with this case? Well, since the last hearing, uh, there's been very minimal progress. The only thing I've seen is the front yard. They've been uh, cutting the front yard, not the back. Um, there's still no permit. Um, I only received one voicemail uh, last, late last week uh, just telling me that they're unable to get the permits. So at this time, staff is uh, requesting a $200 a day fine to a max of 10000 this, this is Yeah, this building's been condemned. It's also been a significant problem for law enforcement because there's people that continue to come back to the property. We've made, I think, uh, multiple arrests um, from this property, people who keep getting back into it um, and trying to, re to squat or reside in there. So right now it's condemned and... Yes. Um, Let me ask a question. I, I have in my notes here that, that there was a question about probate. What would that have been from? <clears throat> I think in, the, in there, there's been, there was an ongoing dispute previously where somebody had purchased the property, uh, but then there was a claim by some uh, heir of the previous owner that they had uh, a claim to the property, and they were in this dispute of who, who owned it. And but we figured that out. Yeah, they, I, I mean, they worked it out in some way. Okay. Um, and the, I mean, you have it documented who the owner is here. Okay, so, so we have documentation that that's, that is the owner. Now, no one, I'm going to assume no one lives in there, is that correct? That's correct. I mean, they're not supposed to, yes. Yeah. But there are, yeah. it's a, that there are police issues. Okay. Yeah, occasionally. So, uh, the recommendation was $200. Right. It seems like they need to. I would like to up it. Go ahead. Uh, I would like to up it to five hundred dollars a day to a maximum of and this is a non homesteaded property, so, so we would change our request to fifteen thousand right right that's what I just was going to say yeah. fifteen thousand okay um, for the final start today 
500 a day, max 15. Right. The fine to start today Perfect. until they come into compliance. Okay. Second. All right, we have a motion from uh, Mr. Gonzalez, a second from Mr. Reinhardt. All in favor say aye. 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 Like sign opposed. Motion carries. Can I just ask a question? Yeah. Would it be feasible for the city to demolish it and charge them? That way you get rid of the police problem. Yeah, do they have a building trade board Since it's for a, Daytona? They haven't no? met in six months. Yeah, that's all possible. Okay. It's just not under they my purview. So it's we do have a debt. What's it called? It's not called it's the debt. It's, 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 it it's the blighted property program, or uh, but it's the condemnation process is what you're referring to. Right. Mm -hmm. You can make a recommendation and go to the board. Yeah. <clears throat> but so has this? Well, did it go to the board yet? It was condemned. Um, Who condemns it? The, the building, building department. department. The building department condemned it, and then did they take it to the board? No, they do, they don't need to take it to the board to condemn it. Um, somebody, if they wanted to appeal the condemnation, right, then they the would they would bring it to the board. Appeal. Right. Yeah. right, and it's up to the owner to do that. Right, they would initiate that typically within 20 days. Okay. Um, so, just because it's condemned and somebody doesn't appeal it within the 20 right. days doesn't also mean that the city tears it down immediately after that. Um, Can you tell us how long the process could be? Uh, no. Okay. We, <laughs> That's okay. Because it could be 30 days after that. It could be two years after that. It's, why would it be it's, so long? It's a combination of funding as well as okay. uh, decision-making based on circumstances. I would rather them can tear down the building and send them the bill for the... Right. Instead of fining them $500 a day that they're going to come back. No, we don't. Yeah. Well, we would be here making that request regardless of whether they were proceeding forward right. with the, the demolition anyways, right. because our process works independent of their process. Right. Um, and, you know, the, if they were, you know, if they were going to tear it down a month from now, it wouldn't change the fact that those violations are there and they're unanswered for not being addressed and our staff time that it's okay. cost us. Right. And I think if somebody comes back for a lien review and we see that the fine was $500 a day, we'll be more than likely to realize or remember that the True. case was egregious. I mean, because we have not done many $500 yeah. a day fines we can do today so far. So, <coughs> and Madam Chair, we typically pull the minutes and have, Right, have, correct, have, we do. Refresh us on. We do, so uh, what, remind what us that was. this person doesn't get off scot-free no matter what no matter what they do. And I would think it would merit a higher fine, uh, especially if there's police problems. Yes. Versus mm -hmm. an empty lot. Absolutely. Sure. Okay, all right. Case number 27. Oh, we only have two more cases. CEB 07-21-223. Mm -hmm. Tracy Smith. All right. Didn't show up last time. What's going on, Ms. Kirk? Okay. Uh, Mrs. Smith is on the waiting list. She was on the waiting list before I even had a case on this property. Um, I have confirmed that she is on the uh, master rehab list. So we are asking to amend to the April cutoff. Okay. That's April 6th. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Chair, I motion to amend the previous order of noncompliance law. Respond until April 6th, 2022 to come into compliance and return to the board for consideration for a fine of $1,000 per day for until compliance is achieved. Such a motion. So moved. Second. Okay. Mr. Reinhardt, who was the second? No, we second, didn't. Mr. Gonzalez. All in favor say aye. Aye. Like sign opposed. Motion carries. Case number 28, CEB 11-21-357. Caroline Knox, trustee, and David Stephen <coughs> Silva, trust. Okay. Uh, life safety issue. Uh, that has not been corrected uh, since the last hearing. I did a reinspection on November 10th. Um, one egress door was opened, but the front door is still nailed or sealed shut. 
Uh, the outside storage also remains. I re-inspected the exterior yesterday. Um, there has been no contact other than the November 10th re-inspection. The life safety issue is that the doors are nailed? Right. Both uh, entry egress doors uh, were nailed shut at the original inspection in August. And uh, when I re-inspected on November 10th, one of the doors, the Mr. Silva was able to open, and that was the door um, under the carport. But the front door, as you can see, it's uh, sealed. They don't, they don't remove the thing, and the, the city has to take action, but do they need a warrant to take those, the door off? You, I asked the you, question. I'm, I'm not Was sure. I, correct I'm not sure that uh, I understand the question, but they, the safety the, issue is the door is nailed shut. How do you correct somebody has safety? to remove the nails? Does is, that require on our part, if the city does it, a warrant? Can I ask the question? Is Boy, this let, let's get let's get Mr. Harrington's question yeah. answered. I, the it process requires a, a condemnation. A condemnation. I mean, for us to be able to take an action on on the property. Does I anyone say. live there? Yes. So, you, I just want. Well, I don't know. Have we discussed that? They are aware that you guys already discussed this and ordered that this be addressed mm -hmm. after the last hearing, mm -hmm. right? Okay, yep. just making sure. Okay. Yeah. That what? The life safety issue was ordered to be addressed within 10 days. Right. Yeah, okay. Right. I was making sure everybody rem remember that. Um, and there, okay, and there is some. Ms. Himes, what's your question? I want to know, is this an elderly person? Um, no, I wouldn't say that. Uh, He's he's not elderly. Um, there might be some some issues. I know the police are familiar um, with <clears throat> Mr. Silva. Uh, different uh, calls to the house. Different what? Uh, different uh, calls to the house. Oh. So I I don't think it's it's not elderly. I think there's a, another issue going on there. For some reason, I've noticed elderly people have started sealing their doors mm -hmm. and windows. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but um, I don't know how else to address this other than to say it's a difficult conversation for us to have. And really, it's um, I feel like it's uh, it's not really an appropriate conversation to have. The reality is is that you can't nail your door shut. Um, There's and, safety reasons. And, and, and the reasons why you are choosing to nail your door shut don't really matter. The reality is mm -hmm. the building code does not allow for that. And Ms. Violet. Carolyn Knox, is she court appointed or friend of house? Relative I believe it's a relative. I don't know for sure, just according to Mr. Silva, mm -hmm. that that it is a relative, but I don't know for sure as I've never spoken to her. Okay. So she's the one that we really need to... Well, what's your recommendation? Yeah. What would you recommend? <laughs> Uh, we we discussed it. Uh, the recommendation is a hundred dollars a day uh, fine, starting on the cutoff day. Uh, the ten day cutoff. Right, and uh, to max out at what what cutoff date? The, yeah, the ten days that were given after when we gave the wasn't it ten days? I'm on safety. to avoid confusion yep. on yeah. the order as far as the ultimate penalty that we, uh, because we're, what we're asking for is a fine that will run until they come into compliance so that we just go ahead and move, move the fine date to the, uh, the compliance date. Which Even, was November, what was the compliance date? 21st was supposed to be. Mm, November 21st? 21st. Yeah. No. What they would be ordered to be in compliance that would be. Can I just, um, board coordinator, can we just see the order please? Or do you have it, Tony? So the, the, the concern that, that uh, Mr. Jackson is bringing up and that we have is that there's the life safety issues and then there's other violations as well. And for us, it's not as important as, as getting the fine as it is when the fine starts. I mean, it's not as important as when the fine starts as getting the fine. So, um, you, you know, we would like them to start at the latest date that it would have started or the latest compliance date for the, the two different violations, which would have, I think, been a January date. It was January 5th of 2022 was the, uh, was the compliance date right. from the uh, order of non -compliance. That puts us in the best position as the city to avoid any issues on appeal. Oh, I see. $100 a day? 
Well, it's not. It doesn't matter what the amount of the mm -hmm. fine is; rather, the date of the fine. Is that what I'm understanding? Well, I mean, the, the amount always matters. Well, I, right. I, I'm sorry. That was yeah. I, I didn't mean to say that. But we, what you're more concerned about is the date of the fine, not the amount of the fine. What are, and just no, and even clarity, that. Clarity. Yes. yes. Okay. What, what I'm concerned I get about right. is when we have the, the dual orders, which sometimes right. we have. If the only non-compliance was the the uh, life safety issue, yes. then I would say let's find and count from there because the other would remain right. as we continue to work on it. Right. This not or, or would have been done, one or the other. Right. But this non-compliance is the whole the whole case. Right. And so That's fine. That's fine. starting compliance early okay. causes a little bit of confusion about uh, not a how problem. it impacts the overall. We're not gonna pay it anyway. Not a problem. I All right. All All right. right. Miss Roby? Um, my question is, do we have Ms. Knox's address? Because if Mr. Silva isn't able to undo his own nails in the door. We noticed them in accordance with the uh, law, what's legally required. And I think someone was present at the last meeting, if I recall, was it? Maybe not. No. no. I'll bring my uh, but, no. no but the but, mail is going to Miss okay. Knox. But, yeah, oh, okay. Know, yep. know That's what I want to make so sure. So the mail goes to her, <laughs> and it's Silva that lives It's uh, to Knox, and Silva lives there? Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, and I've been in contact with Mr. Silva. Okay. So I understand that we, this is a health and safety issue. We gave them 10 days. Mm -hmm. They haven't complied. All right. So where are we? We're getting compliance. Finding Miss Knox. The finding is not a, going to solve it. Right, does going? not solve the life safety. Okay, it is exactly. the next step in the process, though. The next step in the process is for us to get a fine and see if that motivates the folks involved here to correct the issue. If it doesn't take the, if it, they don't take corrective action at that point, then it's on uh, myself and other staff members to make a decision on what process we would do next, whether that means condemning the property, whether that means seeking some type of injunction or something like that. That's, that's a decision that would be made after this process. All right, so can we uh, include in our motion authorizing the city to take the necessary steps uh, to enforce the motion. Mm -hmm. Separate the motion. I just want to make yeah. that's to, or we could mm -hmm. make two we want to make two motions. Uh, so in other words, we can't we can't tell us what to we do. We can't tell us right. 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 yeah. the there are other calls to this house except besides just to be just right. Okay. Just to be clear, just so that it, and if it helps to avoid confusion, we don't need you to authorize us to do that. Right. Like, okay. it, good. Right. right. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll make a motion. Uh, okay. Uh, hopefully, uh, just move forward. Well, uh, I, I would, I would say, with everything that's been said and I've heard, that this case would also merit a five hundred dollar fine. And. So my motion would be that we we uh, impose a five hundred dollar fine starting today. That would have to be retro to the fifth, right? To cover the. You can start it today. It can be any day you pick. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Starting today, we're in a hearing today, so in order to prevent the confusion of the other dates. Uh, Five hundred dollars a day, starting today, to the max of fifteen thousand, until they come into compliance. Perfect. Is there a second to that motion? I second. Second from Ms. Roby. All in favor? Of I, can I just? Aye. Nay. Was I just needed to clarify? Was the property homesteaded or not? Do you know? There is no homestead. Okay. So, then you're good. Fifteen. The, the real question is whether it's owner occupied. Yeah. Oh, that's that's true. Uh, well, it's a trust. It's a, under a trustee set up for David Silva. So, so is that? A, I'd have to ask the attorney on that one. I don't know. But Mr. But Mr. Silva lives there, correct? Right, Mr. Silva. Then he's. Lives it's there. his trust. Yeah. Okay. So it's owner occupied. So it okay. actually need to be the. So it would be need to be so in that max of ten thousand though. Yes, right. okay. that was my concern. Okay. To ten thousand. Yes. So but it's I. Owner occupied. Okay. Well, okay, that's it. Uh, my motion, motion would be ten thousand instead of fifteen thousand. Okay, we have a motion from 
Uh, Mr. Gonzalez and a second from Ms. Roby. All in favor say aye. Aye. Like aye. sign and pose. Aye. One nay. Motion passes. All right, thank okay. you. Okay. That was actually not as bad as I thought it was going to be today, and it was a lot better than yesterday. <laughs> All right, we have one more thing to do, and that's to. Uh, select a chair and vice chair for the year. So the, uh, I'll open the uh, open for nominations. What do I say? I nominate Ouija. What? Second. Does she remember the board? And Ms. Himes for And Ms. Himes. Second. Second. Karen, are you a member of the board right now? She was appointed, I understood. You were appointed. So does that make you a member right yes. now? Did yeah. the, the city commission appoint her? Yes. They did, She's yes. The Last Wednesday, yes. So if you'd like to vote on this, you're welcome. You can abstain if you want to. This is completely up to you. No, okay. she can't abstain. Huh? You can't. She has to vote. She's a member of the board. She has to vote. Yeah, the, board, the, the, the board. board would have said upon adoption, so it has been adopted. So, so you come on up. Yeah. Okay. Let me see for her. Where are you going? Oh, he's a gentleman. I don't know what the and a scholar. <laughs> she said, Karen, you're a member of the board. You have to vote. But she didn't have to vote on all the other things. But she wasn't sitting here with us. She was observing us. Right, she was observing. Now she's now she an organizational meeting. She doesn't hear it. Okay. She's part of the board. All right. Now. Just want to make sure we're all squared away here. All right. Well, welcome. Yeah. <laughs> Karen. Oh, wait, no, we didn't have a, we didn't have a uh, quorum. I would have brought her up here. What? We didn't have a quorum. I would have brought her up here. Right. Well, she we was just observed. Right. We did have a quorum today. This is our new member, Karen Marsh, who lives in Seabreeze. Do you want to tell us why you volunteered what is the for this? Yeah. Right. I wanted to be a member because I would like for the city to look nicer. Right. Um, we do have a problem with code, and um, when the um, tourists come down here, and we are a tourist town. Um, they see all these homes that are not very pretty. Uh, some of our neighbors in the neighborhood that I live in have really fixed up their places, and some have not. Uh, so I just think that um, it just has to be improve. Okay. Thank you very Thank you. much for doing welcome. this. <laughs> Go ahead. So, welcome. Thank you for your service already. So, <laughs> we have a motion. To <laughs> you may regret it. I don't know. <laughs> a motion to appoint you as president. Okay, there's been a motion made to. Uh, am I allowed to do it? Appoint. No, you were. You, do I have to pass? Somebody it? did. Somebody did. I did. That you, Matt? I did. No. I made a motion. We <laughs> do. Mr. Gonzalez made a motion. Uh, Ms. Heim seconded the motion. I will accept the. Move the nomination to be closed. Uh, that, so we'll move. I will accept the position for another year and uh, move that the nominations be closed. All in favor say aye. 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 Uh, now. To give up powers. What? Really? <laughs> 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 anyway. Vice uh, Chairman. Thank you very much for confidence. Um, now for Vice Chair. Any nominations? <laughs> Second. All right. Roby would like now. to nominate Ms. Himes. Second. Okay. Uh, Mr. Reinhardt is second. Um, do you accept the nomination? Yeah. Nomination accepted. All in favor say a motion. Uh, nomination is closed unless there are any others. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Like sign opposed. Motion carries. Okay. Let me ask when we're going to do the workshop. Do we have a date for that yet? It's okay. I, I'm not pushing it, believe me. I, you know, but I think that it would be a good thing because it would take away from us asking maybe so many, because uh, we have questions. No, we, questions. we don't have a date yet. Um, we okay. started to look at a date, but my 
so my my intention was to try to have it in in the evening time be so that the public could attend and learn as oh, well um but uh I think we miscommunicated that, and I think that the original dates and times that we looked at were for daytime. Okay. Um, so we might have to communicate back with you uh, all, uh, but but um, we're still trying to narrow down a date. Okay, that's fine. No 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 problem with me. And it it could honestly, um, just looking at everybody's schedule and everything going on, it could get pushed a couple weeks into to February. Um, but we just want to make sure it works with everybody's schedule. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's good. What's the format going to be if the public is here? Are they going to participate, or is this a workshop mm -hmm. for us? It's a workshop for you guys. The intention is not for them to uh, uh, drown you with questions or have a lot, uh, have any really comment or anything. Okay. Um, it, they, they can come and learn, like you guys are going to learn uh, about information and ask questions, uh, but it is not to delay it or slow it down because we will have a lot of information to cover with you guys, and I'm sure you guys will have a lot of um, stuff that you guys want to cover as well. You know, there's always something new. I mean, I don't think I've ever been to a code meeting where <clears throat> everything's the same. No, never. Every you don't case think about is different. So something comes Speaking about right. right. And I mean, uh, there's situations that you've never really thought of before. Think about that. Just like Mr. Rowley Mr. Said. Captain Lee, on the change in the statute, right. it, did you change your policies, the police department? As far as the the way we take in complaints, yeah. yes, we changed our practices. Yeah, we yes, we need to talk about that. Yeah, yeah, we may want to just... I'm not sure the pub. I mean, the public's learning about it, but only if they make a complaint. Or do you know what I mean? And of course, you do your code stack thing. Do to probably tell them then. Right? Yes, I do it all. I, all I attend quite a yeah. I attend quite a few right. community meetings and explain it to them. Um, it's not as much a topic of conversation now because most people. Have know about it and we've talked right. about it repeatedly right. um, but we do it's been talked about the last two different code stats right. um, it'll probably probably be discussed on next still, Tuesday's code stat as well yeah. and they're still finding new ways to get information to you yeah people I'm sure. still people still we, report we have, stuff they have a new Smyrna I mean that was yeah. when we made it very clear they're still trying to uh, find ways to circumvent that contact by going through the city council members mm -hmm. Oh, so that they don't remain, they want to remain. They want to remain anonymous, so they make the yeah. complaint through other sources, I guess. Yeah, quite honestly, our biggest hurdle has been making sure that other staff within the city understand the law, because they've actually circumvented our, our departments by reporting it through other departments, who then report it to us, not understanding that it has to come with this information or we can't right. follow up on it sure. by law. Yeah. Huh. And they don't get the information from the people when right because they didn't know to, they didn't know to collect it yeah. not yeah. intentionally they just didn't yeah. know yeah. Yeah. yeah I have no idea I mean whose idea was it to stop the yeah, anonymous no. that was state yeah, it was yeah. State. Who, yeah. Was who in the state no idea huh? <laughs> no idea yeah well, somebody got to push through I guess it's everybody deserves to know who their accuser is yeah I guess I guess That's the uh, rationale maybe because Captain Lee. Captain Lee, what I was saying, I've been blessed to do one. Out of four older people home, I could not believe, I don't know where they got it from, that they have screwed their windows down because they're afraid. And, the, and that was my thing. And now with the anonymous, they ain't going to say anything. You know, some older people are really afraid of, you know, being broken into it. They'll be more like afraid that. if there's a fire and they can't get out. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, and that's I, all I, purpose of the, of the of the life safety. Know about the fire, but well, I, I think know that's if you're in a neighborhood I, where they're breaking I think that's yeah. It makes a difference. I think that's what's important about what we do here, though, is that um, part of what we do with the codes is, is that we make sure that people are following the rules so that their fears and their emotions don't override kind of common sense. Yeah. Um, or if it does, that we kind of bring them back into compliance so that they don't have an obstruction like that, a boarded window or something that prevents them from escaping their house if their house does catch on fire. And so that's why what we do is important. You know, because people do they make they, they make decisions based on uh, emotional responses yeah. like fear, yeah. and uh, and and sometimes those things actually put them in a worse position uh, if something else was to happen to them. But it, my feeling on that too is, if you know those people personally, maybe contact their relatives and let them know. You know, your mom and dad are are fearful. Maybe you should take steps to help care for them and their elderly. Well, about like the choke. But yeah, do it. I, um, I the, know, but. the other thing is that 
Yeah. It's real. I mean, that, that code is, if they're afraid of crime, <laughs> yeah. but we yeah. need to address that issue needs to be addressed through the commission, yeah. Yeah. Uh, through the police department, through, you know, the other avenues. It's really a real code <laughs> issue. Yeah, sense of safety. That's what I refer to that right. as. Is you sense of safety is uh, is something that issue. is yeah. uh, is something that. Uh, it takes multiple departments working together right. on to achieve. As a person who has numerous people in their backyard on a, on a <laughs> continuous basis, I understand being fearful. Yeah. But, I mean, the only thing you can do is call 911 and let the police do what they're supposed to do. What's in your backyard? It's so interesting. Drunks. Druggies, people coming off of them. <laughs> 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 open invitation. I mean, they're hopping, but they're two. They're staying two houses over in an Airbnb, but they're hopping my fence to get into my house because they're so drunk they don't know where they're going. So I mean, I have video of it, but oh, we we just run them off. And, wow. But I'm not I'm not up in that 70, 80 years old yet. So yeah. I'm, I'm right. scared, you know. So right. That's what happens when you have zoning that uh, it isn't applied. Uh, <laughs> uh, All right. Okay. I'm I'm going to uh, adjourn. Exactly. adjourn the meeting. Oh, it was.